Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Last time we talked about JavaScript, and we talked about it more from the perspective of what it adds to the page. And what it adds to the page is it adds interactivity. By interactivity, I mean the ability to, in some manner, modify the page without having to reload the entire page. I mean, if you want to look at it that way, links are a form of interactivity, because you click on them, you get taken to a new page. But that's not really what we mean when we talk about JavaScript providing interactivity. With JavaScript, you stay on the one page, and you change something about the page, one way or another. Now, the benefit from that is that by not reloading the whole page, by simply tweaking the page that's already been loaded, the, the client, the user, gets a quicker response. It's also a benefit on the server side as well. Because the server then doesn't have to handle all these little requests for modifications. So I think the example we looked at was this one. Whereas, as you put your mouse over different menu items, the submenu down here changes to be reflective of what your mouse is over. That's what I mean by interactivity. And we can tell this is something that happens like immediately. Even if you're on a slower connection, these things would pop up very quickly. Yes? Is that because it's already loaded? Because it's already loaded. And it's simply showing and hiding that. So in other words, when this page gets delivered, it get more than meets the eye gets delivered. In other words, I go, and as I request this page, I get not just the content that I see, but a whole slew of content that I don't see. And I also get um, included in there, um, the instructions to make it interactive, to say, hey, when your mouse is over such and such place on the screen, go and uh, show the, the NFL menu. And when it's over NBA, show the NBA menu, and so on. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to look at some simple examples of this. Um, and we're going to start slow, and, and then we'll build. Um, you know, we have a few more classes left, and, and we'll go as far as we can. Um, over that. All right. Before we do that, though, I want to talk about sort of the formula for all JavaScript. Because there's really three pieces to JavaScript. And keep in mind that I'm talking about typical uses of JavaScript. You know, there, there, there are exceptions, but most of JavaScript that we do there's three things that sort of work together. All right. The first thing is events. User events. And what we mean by that is that the user does something on the screen. So, for example, let me put the other two up too. By user events, that means that the user does something and the page reacts. So examples of user events would be a mouse over. By mouse over, I mean the user places their mouse over something on the page, like we saw before.
the definition of interactivity that we're giving is that the user does something and the page responds. And specifically, the page responds without like reloading a whole new page. So, as I put my, the user event is the user puts their mouse over uh, a link and that pops up and so on. What are some other user events that a user could do? Could click on something. All right. Could press a key. So a key up or a key down. Their mouse could go out of a region. All right, if you put your mouse over something, you can also remove it. So I put my mouse over the NFL, I remove my mouse from the NFL. So that's a different event. Mouse on, mouse off. And there's, there's a bunch of these, all right? Uh, there, there's more than this. The ones I have listed here are, are, typical, um, are, are typical events that, that you, would, uh, you would see. You click, you press a key, you put your mouse over, you take your mouse off, all right? Again, there are others, but this is a pretty good list. These events are expressed as HTML attributes. In other words, if I wanted to put so that something happens when I put my mouse over an image, all right, what I would do would be something like this. On mouse over would be an attribute on the image tag. The image tag is a tag that we're interacting with. All right, so that's the one that the user is putting their mouse over to cause something to happen. So what we can do is when the mouse goes over something, we can run some code to do something. Or on a button. Remember when we were talking about form controls, I said there's just plain old buttons that don't submit the page, but they, they are used to initiate JavaScript. Well, I could have on a button an on-click event. And I can specify some JavaScript that gets executed to do something on the page. All right? Are, are, are the what? Is what? These? Oh, no, no, that's just a numbering. That's just like the numbering in an outline. All right, so, yeah, ignore those. Well, I'm glad you asked that. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just the way the outline is, is being prepared. The DOM is a way to point to things on the page that you want to change. We'll go over an example of this in a minute. All right. And then finally, the JavaScript language is the whole series of instructions that you can use in JavaScript to do that, that gets triggered by the events, that uses the DOM to point to things, and you can do processing logic. For example, I could write code that if the user clicks on the button, depending on the time of day, it does something different. If it's evening, it does one thing. If it's morning, it does something else. So I can do all this. I can put statements in the JavaScript language to do that. 
or if the user is located in one place, do this. If the user is located in some other place, do that. So all these things are things that I can put code in to do. All right. Number one is pretty straightforward. All right. In in a couple minutes here, you're going to know just about everything you need to know about events for the most part. The DOM and the JavaScript is where the complexity comes into. And we'll cover some basic DOM things and some basic JavaScript things to, to, to put, to implement some of these effects that we uh, have seen. All right? These different events have specific names. You have to call them right. Like I call this one on mouse over on click. If we Google HTML event, You'll see here's a list of all the different ones that you have. On click, on double click, on drag. There's a whole bunch of them. We're going to just focus on a handful of them, but all of the other ones work about the same. It's just that they get triggered at different times. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create an HTML page that has, that's like a self-quiz, all right, where there's a question and the answer's hidden, and when you click on a button, it shows you the answer, all right? So that's interactivity. We're not going to reload the page. We're going to first show the question, and then we're going to display the answer. So, let's go in to Notepad. And in this example, we'll see all three parts of it. We'll see a user event, we'll see the DOM being used, and we'll see a very simple JavaScript statement. So, let's create Yeah, DOM is an acronym for Document Object Model. In other words, it is a model that the browser uses to point to things on a web page. You know, a model is where something corresponds to some real life thing. You know, if you have a model car, a model car corresponds to a real car. Well, the document object model is a set of objects in this programming language, things called objects, that correspond to the different things on the page. So by changing the elements of the DOM, you actually change the items on the page. So let's go in and let's create our HTML document. And I'm going to start this off very simply by putting in just maybe one question. We could certainly expand this to more and an answer. And we'll see how the three things, that is the HTML, the CSS, and JavaScript all work together to make this page work. So I'm going to put two paragraphs in here, one for the question and one for the answer. What does HTML stand for? And I'll put the answer. And of course, like this, without any CSS styling, of course, we're going to see both the question and the answer, which isn't what we want.
did something wrong. I didn't save the HTML. Okay. Let's go and turn file extensions on. Save it as quiz txt. So let's change it to quiz.html. All right, there we go. Now, we see the question, we see the answer. All right? Now, obviously, that, that isn't the way we want this to work. We want the answer to be hidden initially. All right? I also forgot the button, which I can put on in a second here. So I can go in here. And Okay, so I put the button in there now. Now, I want to hide this paragraph, all right? How can I, through CSS, hide this paragraph? All right, we could do it actually a couple different ways. We could say visibility is hidden, or we could say display none. Both of those would effectively do the same thing, all right? In CSS, right. So I'll go in here and I'll make my style tag. And again, just for, some, just for convenience, I'm going to put the style sheet in the same file. You still would be better off using an external style sheet in nearly all cases. Now I can't say, I can't say paragraphs visibility hidden. What do I have to do? I have to give it an ID. So I'll give it an ID of answer. So now I can say pound sign answer visibility hidden. All right. Let's make sure this works. And it doesn't. Find answer. Visibility hidden. ID equals answer. How are we going to figure this out? I know what you're thinking. What are you asking us for? <laughs> First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and run this through the W3C validator just to see if there's something dumb like a spelling error that I'm not seeing. No errors found. Yeah, I'm, you're right. You're right. I'm re, I'm, I keep saving it as TXT. You're right. Thanks. Uh, scratching my head there. So I'll do save as. There we go. All files. Save as quiz.html. There we go. All right. Now we don't see the answer. Thank you. I just, I just sat there staring at that for hours probably. Okay. So we got it hidden. 
we have the HTML. So in other words, when this page gets loaded, the user gets all the content they need, right? Because that's HTML's job is to provide the content. The appearance is controlled by CSS. That is, we want to see the, uh, the question, but not the answer. So CSS did its part. Last is JavaScript's part. And JavaScript's part is to do the interactivity. In other words, without reloading this page, we want to show the answer. So we do that based on our three pieces here. The event, the DOM, and the JavaScript language. OK. So what do you suppose the event is going to be for this? On what? On what? On click. On the button, right? Because it's the button that we're going to click on to make this happen. All right? We could do this a bunch of different ways. We could have a little thing on the page that when we put our, in, when we, when we put our mouse over it, the answer appears. In fact, we'll do that in, in a second here. All right? But the way I define this is with the button, we want to go and do something. What do we want to do? All right, let's talk about conceptually what we want to do. What we want to do is we want to point at this paragraph because that's the guy that we want to change. We want to change this paragraph. How can we identify the paragraph that we want to change here? We can identify it based on the ID, right? Remember, ID identifies. In fact, when we talked about this way back when we first introduced IDs, we mentioned that IDs ought to be unique, right? In other words, there should only be one thing on the page for a given ID. So I shouldn't have two things on the page called answer, all right? Why did I say that? Well, for a number of reasons, but in this case, I want to point to that paragraph and only that paragraph. Therefore, that ID better be unique because I'm going to use that ID to point to that element. And the mechanism by which you do that is called the DOM, or the Document Object Model. Now, how do I point to that button? Well, I say document. That's part of the Document Object Model. By the word document, I mean somewhere on this page. Look. Get element by ID, that means I'm going to use the ID to look something up on this page. The capital letters are absolutely significant. JavaScript is case sensitive, which means that you need to get the proper case for it to work. All right. So document means somewhere on this page. Get element by ID means I'm going to use the ID to find something on the page. Well, what ID do I want? I put that in parentheses. I'm sorry, not parentheses, but quotes. I want the ID of answer. Yeah, I, I, I do that on purpose. We'll, we'll come back and, and talk about that. So this part of the DOM expression says point to this paragraph. Point to the thing on the page that has an ID of answer. That's what that part of it says. Document says it's somewhere on the page. Get element by ID means I'm going to use the ID to, to find this. And answer is a specific ID that I want. Now, what about that thing on the page? I could be doing a lot of things for it. I could be changing the size of it. I could be changing the color of it. I could be changing all sorts of things about it. Well, I want to change the visibility of it. All right? The visibility is part of that guy's style. So I say document get element by ID answer dot style. What part of the style do I want to change? I want to change the visibility. And what do I want to change the visibility to? I want to change it to visible. All right. Let's make sure this works, and then we'll, we'll analyze it in more detail. 
Um, typically, it doesn't matter, but I, I think, strictly speaking, it's, it's lowercase. There we go. So let's analyze this again and, and break it down because this is, we're going to do a whole bunch of, and when you write JavaScript, you're going to write a whole bunch of statements that look like that. So it's good to get used to, to, to this. Document means somewhere on the page. Get element by ID means I'm going to look up the thing on the page that I want to change using its ID. There's other ways you could do it. Right, there's other ways that you can reference it, but the most straightforward way and sort of the workhorse is get element by ID. Find the thing on the page that has this ID. All right? So that's what the first two parts mean. What is it about that that we're interested in? We're interested in the style. We're interested in something about the appearance of it. What about the style are we interested in? We're interested in the visibility. And what do we want to set the visibility to? We want to set the visibility to visible. Now notice how the whole on click is in double quotes. But inside the double quotes where I need quotes, I use single quotes. The reason I do that is if I use double quotes here, JavaScript would get confused and it would think that that is the end of the JavaScript statement. It would think that the JavaScript statement started here and ended there, and it wouldn't know what to do with it. So I use single quotes inside the double quotes to indicate, hey, I want to use a quote here, but I can't use a double quote because I'm already using that for something else. Style visibility, if you notice, matches that exactly. So in other words, that's simply the name of the CSS property. And visible is one of the two uh, possible values for this. Um, there might, be a, there might be a handful more values, but the two main values for visibility are hidden and visible. So I didn't make that up, right? That's the CSS rule, that you can make things hidden, you can make things visible. Yes? Uh huh? It would depend on the browser. I, I mean, some browsers may do that. Um, Let's see. This one doesn't particularly do it. Yeah. Well, all the attributes show up as red, not just the ones relating to JavaScript. All right, now. JavaScript is very picky. In other words, remember with HTML we said things like HTML is very forgiving. So like if you put in a wrong tag in HTML, it does its best to figure it out and it's liable to figure it out, and it's liable to display it the way you want to. Like if you forgot an end paragraph tag, you know. Let's say I forget the end paragraph tag here. It's not going to make any difference. The page is still going to work. All right. You don't have that luxury with JavaScript. JavaScript, you must be precise with it. All right, and what does that mean? That means that the names of the DOM things that you're using have to be correct and have to match exactly. So as the question was raised, the capitalization of get element by ID, does that have to be like that? Yes. So if I do this by mistake and use a capital D there instead of a lowercase d, It 
it doesn't work. Because JavaScript doesn't know a function called get element by ID, with the D being capital. It doesn't know what to do, so it breaks. Now, how do you tell? How do you troubleshoot this? Because this is pretty easy to troubleshoot because there's only one instruction. But what if you have a, a bigger script with, with 10 or 12 instructions? How do you tell what's going wrong? Well, I usually use Chrome for debugging JavaScript. And with Chrome, you click on these three uh, little lines and go to Tools and see JavaScript Console. And it more or less tells you what's wrong, <laughs> all right? It, again, it's a computer program that's giving you error messages. So it's not going to say, hey, the D needs to be lowercase, dummy, you know. It's going to say, I don't know what get element by ID is. And so you look and say, well, wait a minute. We said in class use get element by ID. You look at your notes. You remember that JavaScript is case sensitive. And, ah, okay is actually get element by ID. Likewise, if I misspell answer, for example, it's also going to give me an error. And again, it, it, the error you kind of have to read between the lines. Cannot read property style of null. What that's telling you is, hey, I can't find anything on the page called answer. Therefore, the nothing that I found, I can't change the style of. <laughs> All right? So that's kind of what that means. Likewise, if I go and say, you know, style with a capital S, Again, it doesn't know what style is. And finally, if I were to mistype visibility somehow, it doesn't really give me an error in that case. But because the browser doesn't know what visibility is without the I in there, it doesn't know how to handle it. So it just, it, it set the visibility to that, but since the browser doesn't know what to do with that, because it's an invalid choice, it ignores it. So debugging with JavaScript can be very tricky compared to with HTML. Yes? No, you could you could have you can have multiple statements in an on click event. What you could do is right here, you end a JavaScript command with a semicolon. After that, I could go and put another statement to do another thing. Now, you might think and correctly so that if you want to do a whole bunch of stuff, that's going to get to be a very long confusing line. Then what you do is you create something called a function and you call the function from in there. A function is essentially giving, a, giving one name to a group of lines. So instead of saying all the lines separately that you want to do, you call the one function, and then the function does all those lines. Yeah, method. Yeah, in a, if you've done other programming languages, function, method. All right. It will be like that. But yeah, you could, you could, there, there's only one on-click event. There's only one thing that you do when you click on it. You could just add additional. Uh, instructions to it. Repeat that, please. Which event? That will actually be in JavaScript. In other words, we'll hold off on that for a while, but when we write functions, it'll be a JavaScript function. It will be in a script tag, just like we have style tags now. So in addition to the style tag, which tells the browser, hey, you're not dealing with HTML anymore, you're dealing with CSS. There's a script tag that says, hey, you're not dealing with HTML, you're dealing with JavaScript. 
Other questions? Uh-huh. Oh, you could make it inline, you could make it block, however you wanted it to be. Yeah, it, it would be, well, given that this is a paragraph, I probably would want to make it a block display. So if I hid this the other way by saying, instead of saying visibility hidden, I could say display none, then how would I show it? I would say display block. All right, and, and that would work as well. Now, the sky's the limit as far as this goes. Think of anything that you have set in, um, in, um, in CSS. We can change that via JavaScript. All right? So, let's put a button here to change the font of our section. How do we set a font in CSS? How can I make the font? So if I say section, how can I make the font? Well, we can do font size. Let's do that. We'll make it 2M. M stands for emphasis. Um, 2M means twice as big as normal. So it's emphasized twice. So it's, it's two emphasized or two times as big. So let's put on here Let's make the font smaller. On this section. Call that main or something like that. How can we do that? Well, somewhere on the page. I'm going to use the ID to find the thing I'm interested in. Which ID am I interested in? I'm interested in main. What do I want to change about that guy? I want to change its style. And what do I want to change? I want to change the font size. Now, notice one thing. Notice with visibility, it was the same in JavaScript as the, as the the property was in CSS. The one little tweak is where there's a dash in the property in CSS, you don't put the dash in JavaScript, you omit the dash and make the next letter capitalize. So instead of font dash size, in JavaScript you'd refer to it as font size with the S capitalized. As a general rule, the convention in JavaScript is that the first letter of the first word is lowercase. Each subsequent word is the first letter is uppercase. So like if you notice this, if you can't remember, like for example, get element by ID, all right? Well, the first letter is lowercase. Each subsequent word starts with an uppercase, and the rest of the letters are lowercase. 
So you don't really have to memorize it if you just remember that little, little trick. And in the case of there being a dash in the property name, font size, I don't say font dash size, I say font capital size. And I could make that equals 1EM. So I might make smaller button here. We'll go. And do absolutely nothing. And I can make a uh, uh, I'll make bigger one again. Well, let's do this. I can set the size of this to 1M, and I can have three buttons. One that will make it small, default size, and big. Again, remember how this relates to the recipe that we have here. All right? In both these examples, the one where we're showing and hiding the, the answer and where we're changing the font size, we're following this recipe. That is that there's a user event. Now, in this particular case, the user event are all on clicks. But we could use other events, too. And it's an attribute on the thing that the user is interacting with. In other words, the user clicks this button, so the on-click event is on that button. There's an on-click event on this button, on-click event on this button, and so on. I use the DOM to point to the things on the chain, on the, on the page to change. And again, document get element by ID is going to be our workhorse here. Because typically, we only want to change like one thing on the page. This points to that thing on the page that we want to change. We can either change. All these examples, we've been changing the style. All right. Uh, we'll go over examples next week where we're going to change actually the HTML tags in there. All right. For example, we could make it so that when we click on uh, a button, a different image appears. All right, how do we do that? Well, we change the SRC attribute of the particular image. Yes? Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. Yes. If 
you wanted to, the question was, is what if you want to make it so that as the user puts their mouse over a section, it, it, it makes, uh, it makes uh, just that section a different color and bigger. All right. We could do something like that. Let's see. We have a couple minutes left. Let's see if we can do that. I'll put another section here. Actually, I lied. No, we don't have to. And I'll show you a trick to do that. All right? First of all, I'm going to break you, I'm going to put each sentence in a span tag. What's a span? A span is a way to group things together, but it's an inline tag as opposed to a block tag, like div or, 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 or section or whatever. So I can say, Span, maybe I can say span. Here is sentence one. And I can do this. Here's sentence two. So if we look at this, Here's sentence one, here's sentence two. All right. Now, what I can do is I could say on mouse over, equals this. All right. This is another way to refer to the element on the page. When I say this, I mean, well, whatever element that this is on. So when I say this for this span, I mean this span. So I could say this. Style font size equals two M I probably could do two I probably could do just two M. What I couldn't do is say two dot M. That's what confused it before. Yeah, this dot style dot background color. Again, in the style sheet, it would be background dash color. Here we're going to make it background color with no dash and a capital C e equals yellow. The problem is, as we pull our mouse out of it, it's still there. So, how can we fix that? Well, it, right. Uh, in essence, that's right. The, the only thing is, it is on mouse out. So, I could do... on mouse out. Out make the font size one M and make the background white. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this to this guy and both of them should all set. Oh, thanks. All right. And again, you know, if you were writing a little tutorial for someone to, to help them read, that could be very beneficial to do something along those lines. All right.
We'll continue with this next time, and we'll have even more fun changing uh, things on the page. We can even change locations of things. So one of the one, if you if you really want to be wacky this weekend and have a blast, go and write a button that when you put your mouse over it, it changes the position of it. Yeah, chase the button exactly. Pretty straightforward to do. That's our cliffhanger for today. Will someone remind me, and we'll look at doing that on Monday. All right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, we can review. We can possibly review how to do that at some point.